The 2015 Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language. My lecture is uh, from zero to C1 in Chinese without staying in China, because this is the big question. Do you have to go to China or say Japan if you're learning Japanese? Uh, do you already have to go in country? Uh, obviously, it's better if you do, but a lot of us have jobs, family, uh, other things uh, holding us down, so we can't really <coughs> up and go for a half year, a year uh, somewhere. And uh, so I actually managed uh, to, uh, to learn Chinese to a very high level without uh, spending much time in China, and that's why I would like to uh, give you some uh, thoughts and also on, on learning Chinese in general. Uh, so first things about me, I'm a long-term fan of Chinese, even when I was still in, in uh, high school, I was uh, tracing Chinese characters in the margins of my, my um, school books and uh, things like that. I uh, did not go to many Chinese classes, I learned mostly in self-study with uh, the occasional help of tutors. Uh, I actually went to China, but not in the sense that most people would say. Uh, I was uh, six weeks uh, at the Beijing Language and Culture University, and then uh, ten years later, ten days at a um, non-profit uh, um, um, conference for uh, non-profit organizations. So it's not like I learned Chinese in China. It's just, yeah, I, I would really like to go there uh, for for longer, but my life just doesn't <laughs> doesn't work around it uh, at this point anyway. And uh, I recently took classes taught in Chinese at Alana University. Uh, in Chinese linguistics, uh, modern Chinese literature, and a debating class. I say this because uh, for Chinese levels, uh, it's a bit uh, difficult uh, to, to say if it's uh, C1 level, C2 level, uh, whatever, according to European reference framework, because the European reference framework only works for uh, European languages. And in, in China, they have the HSK, which the Chinese government is the, says is the same as the uh, European reference framework now, but there are a lot of uh, yeah um, the debates about that. So um, first things first, uh, why should you even have a plan? Okay, ich ich glaube ich fange mal an uh, Deutsch. <laughs> um, jede Methode oder fast jede Methode uh, funktioniert, wenn man sie nur lang genug durchhält. Aber es gibt natürlich große Unterschiede. Uh, okay, so because I didn't write this on the slides, I'm going to switch back to English. Um, this part, um, so imagine if you're in a new city and you want to go somewhere, uh, obviously you can just, you know, direct yourself in a vague, vague sense of uh, where you want to go and uh, if you follow the streets uh, long enough, you will eventually hit the street that you want to go to. But uh, obviously if you want to go there fast, then it really helps to have a plan. So, um, for Chinese it's particularly important, uh, denn uh, Chinesisch ist uh, wirklich besonders uh, komplex. Um, es gibt uh, sehr viel zu lernen. Um, das uh, Foreign Service Institute uh, meint sogar, man braucht uh, 2200 Stunden. Das kann ich jetzt persönlich nicht uh, unbedingt bestätigen. Ich glaube, ich bin ungefähr bei 1500 oder so. Um, aber auf jeden Fall ist es uh, viel, viel länger als uh, für, eine, uh, für eine europäische Sprache. Uh, und um, okay, man denkt sich, um, ich nehme mir ein Lehrbuch und uh, lerne dann irgendwie. Uh, auch das ist schon für Chinesisch falsch, würde ich sagen. Uh, denn man muss mindestens zwei uh, verschiedene Bücher gleichzeitig uh, benutzen. Uh, einmal für uh, die eigentliche Sprache und dann für die Zeichen. Weil ich habe bisher noch kein uh, normales uh, Lehrbuch gesehen, das die Zeichen richtig unterrichtet. Uh, und am besten direkt auf drei uh, Basismaterialien, nämlich noch eins uh, separat uh, für die Aussprache, uh, um, am Anfang zumindest. Und später natürlich uh, alle möglichen anderen Materialien, mit denen man sich uh, das uh, Sprachenlernen uh, uh, verschönert, uh, zum Beispiel uh, Bücher, Filme, Musik und so weiter. Also auf jeden Fall nicht mit einem Buch durch bis fließend Chinesisch und auch noch nicht mal uh, bis uh, uh, zum fortgeschrittenen Stadium. Und auch mehr. Und genau das ist auch äh, die Schwierigkeit, dass man das irgendwie äh, koordinieren muss, äh, sich überlegen muss, was mache ich wann, zu welcher Zeit, mit welchem Buch. Ähm, und äh, ganz besonders schwierig äh, im Chinesischen ist auch, äh, wie mache ich das, äh, wenn ich nicht mehr Lehrbücher benutzen möchte. Wenn ich jetzt richtig die richtige Sprache 
benutzen möchte. Das sehe ich sehr, sehr häufig bei Leuten, die Chinesisch gelernt haben, eine ganze Zeit lang gelernt haben, vielleicht mehrere Jahre schon gelernt haben, die benutzen immer noch Lehrbücher. Von einem Lehrbuch zum nächsten, zum nächsten, zum nächsten. Und wann kommt die Zeit, in der sie endlich die Sprache anwenden und die Sprache genießen und sich in der Kultur stellen? Das ist auf Chinesisch etwas, ja, es macht Angst, weil es die, die Zeichen gibt und die ganz ähm, äh, ungewöhnliche Aussprache, man versteht auf den ersten Blick äh, viel weniger als äh, in europäischen Sprachen. Man kann sich weniger denken. Äh, auch weil, wenn wir eine europäische Sprache lernen, äh, je weiter wir kommen, äh, desto, äh, ja, desto einfacher wird das irgendwie, weil wir in äh, die gemeinsame, äh, das gemeinsame europäische äh, Vokal Vokabular kommen. Also, ähm, am Anfang äh, sind die Wörter noch äh, sehr unterschiedlich, äh, zum Beispiel äh, Vater und Padre. Äh, und später kommt man zu Wörtern wie Demokratie, äh, Democracy, äh, Demokratia. Äh, selbst auf äh, Griechisch geht das. Äh, irgendwann äh, kommt man in einen Bereich, wo ganz viele Wörter plötzlich bekannt sind, äh, wo man sich schon vieles denken kann. Manche sagen auch, äh, Zeitungen lesen in einer äh, europäischen Sprache, die man nicht so gut kann, ist einfacher, äh, als äh, Bücher für Kinder zu lesen. Äh, genau deswegen. Und das gibt es bei Chinesisch nicht. Und deshalb ist es äh, eine ein besondere Herausforderung, äh, sich äh, von diesen Lehrbüchern abzugewöhnen und äh, was anderes äh, mit der Sprache zu machen. Ähm, ja, ich habe schon gesagt, die äh, Ideen hier, äh, die ich präsentiere, kommen hauptsächlich aus meinem Buch. Das könnt ihr vielleicht von hinten nicht genau erkennen, aber es, ähm, es ist eine Aufstellung äh, zu diesem äh, HSK-Test, Han Yu Shui Ping Das ist der ähm, standardisierte äh, Test für Chinesisch, äh, von dem die äh, chinesische Regierung sagt, dass das sich mit dem äh, Common European Reference Framework äh, deckt. Also äh, nach, äh, nach denen, wenn man äh, denen vertraut, ist äh, HSK 1 das gleiche wie um, A1, uh, HSK2 is the same as uh, A2, HSK3 is the same as B1, HSK4 is the same as B2. And already you can see that uh, a lot of it does not sound too convincing. I mean, okay, um, HSK3, uh, according B1, um, test takers can communicate in Chinese at a basic level in their daily academic and professional lives. They can manage most communication in Chinese when traveling in China. Okay, it sounds more or less like what we expect for B1, but on the other hand, uh, you only have to know 600 words. So, <laughs> yes, um, at least uh, 600 words that come up in the test. Uh, most uh, textbooks will teach you some, some words that uh, are not co covered uh, in the te uh, in, in the text. Uh, in the official uh, tests, but um, still, you can see that uh, the word requirement is uh, rather low for all of them, especially for the very first uh, two levels, 150 words for A1, 300 words for A2, it doesn't quite work out. And uh, another thing you can notice is that uh, for the HSK, the vocabulary requirement always doubles for, from each test uh, to the next. So for the first test, you need 150 words for the second, uh, 300, then 600, then 1,200, then 2,500, then 5,000 words. Uh, so you can also say it's uh, maybe not exponentially more, more difficult, but it's definitely getting uh, much more difficult with, uh, with each test if, if you're going that way. I think it's also that way in the European uh, reference framework, but not quite as harsh. So, before you start, why, why do you want to learn Chinese? This is very important to know, because uh, otherwise you're not going to manage all that time. I mean, 1,500 hours, 2,200 hours, you, you cannot put in that amount of time if you're not very clear of why you're learning that language. Mm -hmm. So I recommend uh, thinking about it and writing it down. Um, also, where to find the time. Uh, you should set aside some time every week uh, to study Chinese and ideally more than once a week because otherwise you just forget too much. Um, maybe you can fit in one or two like longer study sessions in a week and then uh, have a review session like or even just uh, five minutes of Anki on various days. 
um, because uh, the vocabulary just doesn't stick as easily and you need to see it more often. Uh, if you only see it once a week, it's not going to stay in your brain. And the other idea is um, what I tried to uh, show you here is that uh, obviously you have the diminishing returns over uh, the amount of uh, time that you study. At the beginning, you learn a bit of Chinese and you're like, wow, this language is so easy, I can immediately say so many things. And then afterwards, it kind of uh, gets harder to notice when you're making mistakes. And uh, sorry, when you're, when you're learning something and it gets uh, harder to see your progress. And yeah, so the approach that uh, I generally favor in learning languages uh, looks more like this, that I jump from one to the next, to the next, to the next. <laughs> um, in the sense that uh, I set myself uh, uh, concrete goals and then I go from one goal to the next goal to the next goal. And ideally these goals are something concrete, not just like learn 150 words, no. Um, for example, for, for Hebrew, my first uh, goal uh, after about uh, two months uh, was uh, to ha uh, have a dinner uh, with various uh, Hebrew-speaking friends and uh, to just, uh, you know, mangle the language together. I'm not, I'm not claiming I was speaking particularly correctly, but we had a lot of fun speaking Hebrew for all of uh, two hours uh, in a restaurant. And it's a very good goal because when you're with uh, five, six friends, uh, you don't have to keep up the conversation all by yourself. So it's even easier. If I say two hours speaking Hebrew, it sounds like a lot, but uh, if you're sp with uh, six, six people, uh, you can say a little and then you can listen a bit and afterwards, uh, when you have thought of something new to say, you can say it and it works out pretty well. So my idea is uh, to, to have more and more goals and also in my book and uh, in this uh, slides, you will see that uh, I thought of some uh, realistic goals that you could set yourself or also uh, rewards that you could set yourself that will help you uh, go from step to step and always uh, notice your progress. It's very important to no notice your progress because otherwise you just lose motivation. So uh, first, the first step is obviously to go from zero to uh, what we call the A1 or in this case the, the HSK1 here. Uh, the idea is you develop a level that's good enough to be a tourist uh, in, in China uh, or st start to be a tourist in China. And the key problem that you will encounter at this stage is the pronunciation, especially uh, the tones and the uh, different sounds in, in Chinese. There are some consonants that are only distinguished by the position of... Uh, well, well some, some consonants that would be the same in English, like the ch sound, and then in Chinese the, it exists twice uh, with different tongue positions. So things that uh, you have to learn at this stage. Um, vocabulary, well, is 150 words. It's not too scary, though learning Chinese words is um, not, n not as straightforward as learning European uh, language words. They all sound uh, very strange at the beginning, but you get used to it. Uh, in terms of grammar, there's not much of anything. Um, so um, Chinese grammar is super, super simple, especially at the beginning stage. You just stick words together. You don't have a uh, declension, you don't have a conjugation, you don't have any changes to, to, to any of the words. And uh, the word order is also pretty much like English. Uh, so that's uh, not to worry. And characters, I, I strike through because I really don't recommend starting with the characters right away. You should first master uh, the pinyin, the um, Chinese pronunciation, and uh, the way of writing it um, in, in European letters uh, in this uh, standardized uh, pinyin form. Because that will allow you to learn from any textbook that you choose. You can look at any syllable and you'll know how to pronounce it. That's the most important part. There's a uh, Chinese only has... Uh, Ch Ch Chinesisch hat nur ganz äh, wenig äh, unterschiedliche äh, Silben. Und deshalb kann man die wirklich alle aufschreiben äh, und einzeln lernen und äh, richtig gut lernen. Und danach kann man alles aussprechen, was es auf äh, Chinesisch gibt. Ähm, äh, ein mögliches äh, Ziel äh, für, für äh, dieses äh, Niveau ist, dass man sich mit... Äh, mit Leuten im Restaurant halt unterhalten kann, <lacht> zum Beispiel Essen bestellen äh, oder sowas in der Art, oder mal kurz fragen, so, wo kommst du her, ähm, bist du vielleicht äh, aus, äh, aus China, aus, aus äh, Peking oder so. Ähm, ja, das, das kann man sich zum Ziel setzen. 
äh, wenn man ein bisschen was gelernt hat, dass man ins Restaurant geht oder auch schon vorher und es einfach mal ausprobiert. Um, okay, is there anyone here who has trouble currently with the tones? Yes. Okay, um, I will give you a quick uh, hint for the tones. And that is, uh, there's a story that you can imagine. Um, so, there is, uh, there is a little boy, and his father, a German boy, uh, and he is out uh, outside at the park, and suddenly he notices uh, an airplane in the sky. And you know, uh, German children, very young children, they always go da, 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 and so he goes da, da, and that's the first tone in Chinese. <laughs> and then the father, he's uh, not, not quite sure what his uh, son has just uh, spotted, so he goes da, da, and that's the, the second tone, because it's questioning, the second tone is questioning. Uh, and then uh, the, the, the boy can't understand why his, his father doesn't, uh, doesn't see this, this airplane that's right there, uh, so he, he goes da, da, uh, and that is the third tone. And then uh, he, he says, da, da, to, to, to say, yeah, there, there, can't you see it? Uh, so that's the fourth tone, because it's a uh, um, kind of, uh, yeah, aff affirmative kind of uh, sound to it, uh, almost like you're talking to a dog. <laughs> so those are the four, four Chinese uh, tones, uh, neatly in a story, so you can even uh, remember the order of them. <laughs> And uh, I'm using da rather than the English there because da is also a Chinese syllable. <laughs> it just works better. So Chinese tones are not not really uh, scary. Uh, you, you've just heard we also use them to some extent in English and in German and other languages. Uh, it's just a matter of learning to pronounce them uh, consciously. Because, uh, for example, if I'm asking a question, uh, I will naturally use the, uh, the rising tone, the, the, the questioning tone. And if I do that in Chinese, uh, I'm risking, um, using, um, I'm risking mess messing up uh, the words because they will have a different meaning uh, when pronounced with a, with a qu uh, questioning tone. Uh, and so I have to learn to not do that or do it more in a, in a, in a Chinese way. Uh, and of course, uh, to um, to be able to to um, uh, to, to master uh, the conscious use of the tones, because when I'm asking a question, I'm not really thinking about, oh, I need to use the questioning tone now. So uh, that is something that you have to learn that you can make any any word uh, a question if it's uh, necessary, or even uh, every syllable. And uh, of course, there are some uh, exercises to to practice the. Um, and the, the different uh, tones and uh, getting them right together in a sentence context and so on. But at the beginning level, like uh, 0 to A1, uh, you don't need to worry about it too much, just learn the tones in, in isolation at this point and pronounce uh, every syllable uh, correctly. That's the goal. Um, for that, uh, I really recommend uh, Yabla's uh, Chinese pinyin chart. If you uh, Google that, uh, Yabla Chinese pinyin chart, they have every single Chinese uh, pinyin syllable uh, in every tone, and you can listen to them. So every every syllable there is in the Chinese language, uh, you can click on it, you can hear it pronounced in any of the tones. That's really useful. And then for recognition, I uh, recommend the pinyinpractice.com, uh, uh, where they have uh, a lot of uh, online quizzes where you can test yourself uh, on recognizing the Chinese syllables, the, the, the different consonants, also the tones. Uh, and then there's a really awesome tool uh, called Wordbook, offered by the Confucius Institute uh, on the site, uh, and that will help you practice actually pronouncing the Chinese tones. And the way they do it is uh, you, you hear the sound, that you, uh, that you hear the syllable that you're supposed to pronounce, and then uh, you uh, sp say it into your computer microphone, and <coughs> there is a a computer that will grade you. So they have a computer that is actually able to tell you this was about 50% there, and this was 100% there. Way to go. So you can practice this way, and I found it much more, much more useful than practicing with uh, native speakers, because Chinese native speakers, they're a bit uh, reluctant uh, to criticize uh, your, your tones or uh, generally to your Chinese pronunciation <laughs> at the beginning <laughs> stage, 
um, <coughs> later when, when you say you're fluent, then you're much more likely to criticize. But at the beginning, anything you can say is good. Uh, so it's uh, really difficult to get a good feedback and uh, to improve that way. So you can practice um, a lot with the computer and then obviously get some native friends and ask them for a bit of feedback, but don't use them as your mainstay of uh, practicing because they will just get tired of it. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, so um, the vocabulary, obviously you don't need very much at this stage, and um, despite that, it is more useful than if you say, learn 150 words of German or French or the like, it doesn't sound like anything. In Chinese you can actually do a lot with it because they don't have many filler words, uh, they don't have much uh, grammar to take into account. Um, the, the numbers are, are very basic, you only need is it uh, 11 or 12 uh, words uh, for, for numbers and then you can build all the rest of them. So you, you don't have need much vocabulary for that. Uh, the weekdays and the months are numbered, mm -hmm. so you don't need to learn Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, January, February, uh, March, no. Uh, just uh, it's day one of the week, uh, weekday one, weekday two, weekday three, month one, month two, month three. <laughs> so you're saving a lot of words and uh, you can actually I, I believe that uh, they're accurate if they say, uh, yes, you can get by as a tourist if you just know 150 words of Chinese. At, at the beginning, it's really very uh, productive uh, language. And uh, to learn the uh, language at this stage, uh, I have my own website called uh, learnyou.com. Uh, uh, it's also um, it's a, a kind of uh, like an SRS, but uh, based on uh, sentences and conversations. Uh, so, for example, you... Uh, the, the computer asks you, how do you say, uh, I am Judith? And then you, you have to uh, uh, say that, or the computer asks you, how do you respond to how are you in Chinese? And you have to say that. And if you make a mistake and say you, you forgot the word for how in Chinese, uh, then the computer will show you more sentences involving the word how, or more questions involving the word how. Uh, so it... Um, it's completely adapted to, to <coughs> you and to the mistakes that you make. <coughs> well, of course, um, there are plenty of courses for Chinese, especially if you're looking in China. So um, you can also use any of the regular textbooks. Uh, I do recommend getting a tutor, uh, at least occasionally. That's the way I, I work best. Obviously, if you um, generally do well in classes, you can try classes. I found them generally moving too, uh, too, too, sl too slowly on the parts that I know and too fast on the, word, uh, the parts that I don't know. Um, so I, I like to uh, use self-study materials and then just uh, uh, consult with the tutor maybe uh, once a week or so and uh, just use that to practice and to ask any questions that I have. So I don't use the tutor to, to teach me like from a classroom, I do most of that myself, but uh, just to confirm what I learned and to uh, practice and to ask questions. But obviously it's up to you. Well, the characters, uh, like I said, it doesn't really make sense to uh, study them until you're completely comfortable with the Chinese pronunciation and Chinese written in pinyin in the uh, Latin transcription. Um, you can, at this stage, uh, if you're very curious, you can uh, read some light materials uh, that explain the basic ideas, uh, such as the character evolution. Um, like we see here, this is the ancient character for sun. It kind of looks like the modern uh, astronomical symbol for sun. And then over time, it became more oval and then more, uh, really more, more edgy because in modern Chinese, you don't have any uh, really um, circular shapes. So if you just look at the modern characters, they look pretty abstract, but if you know the evolution, then they're pretty easy to learn, uh, pretty easy to understand. So this is uh, the sun, this is uh, the moon, uh, this is mountains. Again, modern is abstract, but earlier you can understand it. Uh, this is the eye, which became like this and then this. If you see this, there's no chance you're gonna recognize it as an eye. But uh, if you know the evolution, then it works. Uh, and this way you can learn a lot of the basic elements. Uh, and then most Chinese characters are actually uh, compounds um, <coughs> that contain several uh, elements. And you can also learn about uh, how the they are uh, combined. I think uh, we heard about it in a few of the lectures uh, here already, so I'm not going to uh, go too much uh, in depth about it. Um, but for example, uh, here the character for sun and moon are combined uh, to mean uh, bright, 
because both uh, sun and moon are bright. Uh, and uh, here we have um, a woman and a uh, horse. And this is a um, semantophonetic uh, combination, like uh, Simon H. was explaining uh, yesterday, in that uh, the horse just gives you the pronunciation. Uh, in the horse is pronounced uh, ma, and then um, it's, it's like a, a riddle. Uh, what is a woman? Uh, the, the w uh, a word for a woman that sounds approximately like ma, and um, that is uh, mama, it's uh, the mom, <laughs> the mother. Uh, so it's, it's, like, it's like a guessing game, but you only have a chance of uh, succeeding at it if you speak Chinese. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, let's move on. The next level, uh, A1 to A2, you're trying to become an upper beginner. At this point uh, in pronunciation, you should focus on uh, compounds and uh, santi, that is uh, the ways that the tones shift when they're together. Um, again, vocabulary is not going to be a big deal at this level. Um, there's uh, some grammar at this point, and uh, here I uh, recommend starting to work through uh, learning Chinese characters by uh, Matthews, which is a really excellent book uh, for mm -hmm. learning the characters. Uh, I do not recommend just using a regular textbook to try to ex expect it to teach you the characters. Um, the problem is that uh, when you're learning basic Chinese vocabulary, uh, the words that you're learning uh, are not the best words that you should be learning to, to learn the characters because they can contain uh, they can be very abstract, they can contain a lot of uh, different elements in the characters and ideally you should be learning the characters <coughs> from simple to most uh, complex. Uh, so you first want to know the character for sun, uh, for example, and sun and moon and then the combination for, for bright. Um, <coughs> it doesn't make sense to start with uh, a, complex characters in, in a complex character involving uh, five or so parts you need to know all the basic parts first, and those basic parts are not uh, among the more, more common words. So um, that is why I recommend at the beginning uh, to have this uh, kind of uh, two-track two uh, approach uh, where uh, you're learning uh, regular words using your, your textbook, uh, you're learning the pronunciation, obviously, and then afterwards you start on the characters, and you're using a book like uh, Learning Chinese Characters by Matthews uh, because uh, it will show you uh, how the characters are built from the most basic elements uh, to the more complex ones and they have a really neat order so that uh, you can uh, get from, from any character to, to the next. It's like building a house. You don't start by building the roof. You, you want to start uh, with the foundation and then uh, keep building more and more uh, complex uh, things based on that. Uh, yeah, and as a, p a possible goal at this stage is this uh, let's mangle Chinese dinner with your Chinese-speaking friends, uh, in including people learning Ch the language and uh, native speaker friends. Um, then uh, going to intermediate, uh, the pronunciation becomes less of an issue. I mean, obviously, if you notice that you have still have some problems, then you should work on that. But uh, ideally, at this stage, you should have mastered it. Uh, and vocabulary... Okay, you'll need to learn a bit more vocabulary, but with Anki it shouldn't be a big of a problem. And then the grammar. This is the stage where grammar becomes an issue because this is where you learn uh, Chinese grammar that doesn't correspond to uh, Western languages uh, very much. But um, even then, it's still child's play compared to, say, <coughs> Russian or the like. So Chinese is really simple in terms of grammar. Uh, and this is probably the stage where the grammar is uh, the hardest. After that, you just uh, have a problem with uh, word usage, but it doesn't get so difficult. Um, yeah, you keep learning, uh, learning Chinese characters. This book leads you to, I think, 1,200 characters or so, so you're going to keep using it for a while. Um, some things you can use, uh, topic-based fluency. Have you heard of that approach? Okay, this is something you can use in your other languages as well. Um, is that uh, if you're meeting a tutor, uh, to focus on one topic uh, every session. And I mean to really exhaust the topic. For example, you, you're talking about the weather. So um, maybe you want to pre-study uh, some of the, ve the weather vocabulary, because I always find it difficult to learn words during a session. Uh, so you pre-learn a bit of uh, weather vocabulary, and then you try to talk about it for an entire session, say 45 minutes or so, just weather. And the way you can do it is uh, you talk about uh, the weather right now, the weather tomorrow, uh, yesterday, um, on your vacation, uh, how is it normally in May, how is it normally in December, how is it uh, in Europe, um, 
the place you live and other places that you visited, how is it in China, also listen a bit. Uh, so the idea is that uh, at the end of this one session, there is this topic that you can talk about uh, completely fluently. It's, it's just the weather, but if you're on weather in, in this uh, kind of topic, you can express yourself as well as any fluent uh, Chinese speaker can express himself on the topic of weather. And then in the next session, uh, you, t uh, you choose another topic and you also try to exhaust it. You really try to uh, develop uh, a topic fluency so that um, with each session you have one more topic that you can talk about completely fluently and uh, without hesitations. And this is different from what most people are doing because I see like a lot of people start talking to their tutor and they spend two minutes on the weather and then five minutes on what they did yesterday and then five minutes on, I don't know, some Chinese culture topic. S and that way they never become comfortable enough with any of the topics in order to talk about them uh, fluently. Uh, because uh, they have this two minutes of practice uh, talking about the weather, they get some corrections and then they already move on to the next topic and then the ne next session they again talk about the weather, they again get some uh, corrections and it, it never really sticks. And that's what you get if you exhaust the topic, if you keep talking about it for longer than you would normally do, just in one session. Uh, and um, at the end of the session you're completely fluent and this fluency, uh, fluency will stick. So in the next session you can do uh, um, like a two minute with a conversation and you'll be uh, you'll be able to, to talk about it uh, without any problems. And this way you can also build your confidence. It's a very good tool if you're at the intermediate stage and you're wondering why am I not making any progress. This way you always see your progress because you know uh, last session I was not able to uh, talk about uh, unemployment. Now I'm able to talk about that. And then this session I'm going to learn to talk about, uh, I don't know, demonstrations, whatever. Um, so even at the advanced or in intermediate or advanced stage, you can use this in order to keep uh, building your vocabulary and your fluency uh, about the topics that you like to talk about. Uh, you don't have to do this textbook style. If you're not going to China anytime soon, you don't have to learn about uh, how to uh, order a tailored dress or I don't know what. Uh, so only what's relevant to you and what you like to talk about uh, with your tutors. And get fluent <coughs> about that. Um, keep using a, t a course book. Uh, there's a cool, cool site called uh, singchinesesongs.com where you can start learning some Chinese songs. They even have a karaoke version where you can sing along, you see the translations. Uh, it's pretty cool. Obviously, you can also choose any songs that you like, that you're interested in. Uh, Gurulu.com uh, is an interesting site because they have uh, texts for you that you can read at any stage. So if you know, I'm currently working uh, HSK1 or I'm currently working HSK2, they have texts that use only the required vocabulary for those levels because the Chinese government gives you a published list of each w uh, of every word that you need to know. I'm not sure if all the other national agencies do that, I don't think so. So if you say I'm German B1 but you don't have a list uh, which words you're supposed to know and then the other publishers can't uh, provide materials based on that. But the Chinese government actually gives you a list of all the words that you need to know at this level and that means they can have tailored made materials that only use those words and then you can enjoy some Chinese reading even at a very early stage. Uh, FluentU.com uh, has uh, a lot of videos, interesting stuff uh, like funny advertisements or funny short films uh, also uh, geared to various levels. Uh, and on CNTV, you can find the Happy Chinese series, which is like uh, it's like a sitcom uh, in Easy Chinese. It's uh, quite a lot of fun, obviously with su uh, with subtitles and some grammar explanations in the middle. But yeah, it's like 15 minutes episodes, and uh, pretty nice to watch. Um, at this stage, the key problems are confusing similar sounding words and uh, remembering words fast enough in conversation. Okay, who has the first problem? Confusing similar sounding words. <coughs> yes, <coughs> down there. And the second one, remembering words fast enough in conversation. Yes, okay, also a few. Maybe I should talk about these. I'm a bit afraid that uh, we won't get to uh, f uh, fluency in this um, uh, lesson, but we can also keep talking about it uh, afterwards and at lunch. So uh, for similar sounding words, um, you, can y you should be working more on your, um, on your on, on your um, understanding of uh, opinion, so that uh, you really you really hear the differences uh, between uh, similar s uh, sounds, like the two types of ch sound and the two times, uh, types of ch sound. 
Uh, if you hear the difference more clearly, it will already help you. And then you can also use uh, mnemonics to include uh, the particular sound uh, in, uh, in your learning. Uh, everyone knows what a mnemonic is? Kind of, yes. <laughs> I see some nods. Um, okay, and remembering words fast enough in conversation. Um, there are some, you should be learn, uh, learning chunks, like in German. Uh, ich möchte. Ich möchte um, should be coming up very, very soon in, in your German uh, studies, even though it's a, it's a conditional. Ich möchte is a conditional from mögen. Um, so, it, 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 romantically, it doesn't make sense to learn it early, but if you know German, you know that ich möchte comes up everywhere. If you say, ich möchte ein Bier, ich uh, möchte nach draußen gehen, ich möchte das Brandenburger Tor sehen. Uh, lots of sentences you can use that for. And this kind of uh, expressions, you should, you should focus on these kind of expressions. Uh, and uh, anything that, you, uh, that people generally say together, I don't study uh, vocabulary word by word. Uh, I stu uh, study them in chunks, in the way that uh, they normally come up. For example, I don't study beer, I study a bottle of beer. Uh, I don't study coffee, I study a cup of coffee. Uh, I don't study um, go, but I'd like to go. In this kind of expression that c keeps coming up. Um, th th there is actually a really, really great uh, lecture from the Polyglot Conference in Budapest by Anthony Lauder. Um, you can look it up on YouTube. And he explained that actually uh, our brains are not physically able to recall all the words that we're trying to use. So when I'm giving this talk, uh, I'm not calling up each word from my memory. Instead, I'm using chunks. Because uh, it's, it's just it's just not far fast enough. If you have a sentence of eight words, no, you cannot recall these eight words individually and then apply grammar and then speak them. It's uh, not realistic. What you need to do is to learn them in chunks of two or three words at a time. Uh, like, uh, uh, I would like is a, is a chunk. You don't recall I would like. And that's a problem that most uh, beginners have when they can't uh, speak fast enough when they can't remember words fast enough in conversation, is that they're trying to really build this from scratch. I would like. No, uh, you need to have it as a chunk. You need to have it as one word, so, uh, so to say. It's one word, I would like, and then uh, you continue with your conversation. And then if you have really a word that you don't use so often, like falafel, uh, you can call that, you can recall that as a single word, but you shouldn't be wasting energy uh, calling up uh, I would like as th uh, three separate words. And that's why you need to learn uh, several words at a time. If you're making flashcards, always try to put them in this kind of context. Not an arbitrary context, but only the one that you're most likely to use. Some possible goals at this stage where you can vacation in China if you have the chance uh, or sing some karaoke with your friends. Uh, most cities have a Chinese uh, karaoke place. Uh, I mean, the big cities. Um, also, there's this awesome booklet that I can recommend to you. It's uh, uh, San Ren Xing, uh, Anna's Sommer in, Be uh, in Beijing. Uh, it's, uh, okay, it's, it's done by a German company, so the, sub, uh, the, um, the second title, Anna's Sommer in Be uh, Beijing, is uh, of Deutsch. But actually, the, the book itself is in Chinese, and it's uh, without even pinyin, so you get used to reading Chinese characters. Uh, it only uses uh, 600 characters, so at this stage it's a perfect goal to be able to read this book. And it's actually interesting, it's like a, an interesting story that you can read with a very uh, small vocabulary and very few uh, characters. Uh, es gibt natürlich auch uh, Bücher mit uh, Pinyin, also mit uh, Zeichen oben und dann Pinyin unten, uh, die man kann man natürlich auch nehmen, aber ich finde das ist eher kontraproduktiv. Einmal ist äh, Chinesisch viel einfacher zu lesen, wenn man die Zeichen liest, einfach zu verstehen. Äh, und auch, äh, man, man muss sich an die Zeichen gewöhnen. Man, man muss sich äh, daran gewöhnen, weil später gibt es nichts mehr mit Pinyin. Also wenn ihr so ein Buch seht, wo äh, Zeichen und, und Pinyin genutzt werden, einfach das Pinyin abdecken. Ja, das äh, muss man einfach tun und man muss sich daran gewöhnen. Das ist am Anfang ganz äh, schwierig, äh, Zeichen zu lesen ist... Äh, Vielleicht auch etwas äh, langsam, müßig, aber äh, ja, man muss sich äh, daran gewöhnen. 
Ähm, und ich mag diese Bücher nicht, äh, die sowohl Zeichen als auch äh, Pinyin haben, denn äh, sie haben meistens nur so vier Sätze pro Seite, weil sie das so groß drucken, einmal groß Zeichen, dann noch groß Pinyin, äh, dann noch Abstand dazwischen. Das ist eigentlich, äh, die, die verkaufen Luft. <lacht> ja, wirklich. Also es gibt ein paar, wo das äh, schön gedruckt ist, dass man das, äh, nicht, dass man das nicht sagen kann, aber bei den meisten Büchern, die ich gesehen habe, ist das einfach, äh, wenn die Pinien dazu schreiben, dann ist das ein, einfach ein, ein, eine Möglichkeit für die, äh, weniger auf die, äh, auf die Seiten zu drucken und dann irgendwie eine Geschichte, die normalerweise fünf Seiten ist, äh, verkaufen die dann als äh, 25 Seiten oder so. Um, okay, uh, B1 to B2, if you're trying to go towards advanced level under HSK4, this is actually the first level that's uh, really, really useful. The Chinese government says that if you uh, study to HSK4, you can manage any everyday situation, you can talk about your work, you can talk about your studies, and uh, with this level uh, you're allowed to uh, register for Chinese uh, universities. Now, I wouldn't actually recommend going to Chinese, Chinese university if you only have HSK4. With HSK5, you're going to have a lot less trouble. Uh, but if you are in a hurry, you can do it starting from this stage. And at this point, the bi biggest difficulty is to, uh, to learn the Chinese way of saying things. Um, for example, uh, I would say there are many people in this room. But the Chinese would say the people are very many. Um, so they use this many uh, kind of as a verb. The people are many, <laughs> not there are many people. Mm. Also at this stage you will finish learning, the, uh, learning Chinese characters. Um, ein ganz großes Problem, wenn man erstmal, okay, who, who has this problem? Perceiving Chinese text as an image. You, you look at a, a page of Chinese text and it appears to be completely, I don't know, ob obscure, like, like a wall. Yes, at least one. And of course, uh, reading way too slowly is also a problem. Um, for perceiving Chinese uh, text as image, do you understand German? Yes. Okay. Dann uh, kann ich das auch auf uh, Deutsch erklären. Ich möchte nicht so ganz so viel Englisch sprechen. Ich merke schon wieder, ich, ich spreche viel zu viel Englisch hier. Um, also, ähm, was ich äh, gefunden habe, ist, äh, dass man äh, querlesen muss auf Chinesisch. Das muss man lernen. Das muss man separat lernen. In anderen Sprachen ist das äh, recht einfach, weil die Wörter einzeln da stehen und dann in lateinischen Buchstaben, lateinische Buchstaben kennt man schon, äh, dann ist das äh, relativ einfach, auch wenn ihr mir einen, einen Text auf Katalanisch gibt oder ich weiß nicht, auf äh, Slowakisch oder so, ich gucke kurz drauf und äh, wenn ihr sagt, ich findet mal dieses Wort, okay, das Wort ist da, ich sehe es, das ist nicht das Problem. Auf Chinesisch muss man das neu lernen, also ganz von vorne, äh, weil die Zeichen erstmal äh, ohne ähm, Leerzeichen geschrieben werden und auch weil die Zeichen anders aussehen äh, und es davon viel zu viele gibt. Ähm, das heißt, äh, um das zu lernen, äh, nimmt man sich zum Beispiel eine Seite chinesischen Text äh, aus, dem, äh, aus dem Lehrbuch äh, oder aus einer Zeitung oder so, und versucht, einzelne Zeichen zu finden, ohne zu verstehen, ohne, das, ohne den Text zu lesen, weil normalerweise wird man ja von vorne nach hinten einfach durchlesen, nein. Man versucht, um, um gar nicht in die Versuchung zu kommen, liest man vertikal. Von oben nach unten, und Chinesisch ist ja normal geschrieben, von, von links nach rechts und so weiter. Also wenn man vertikal liest, dann versteht man den Sinn der Sätze nicht, aber man kann trainieren, die einzelnen Wörter in so einer Wand chinesischem Text zu erkennen, wenn man Wörter sucht. Und das ist dieses Querlesen. Und das hilft dabei, den chinesischen Text auch als, als Wörter zu erkennen und nicht nur als schönes Bild. Weil selbst wenn ich einen Text 95% der Zeichen äh, kann äh, und auf den Text gucke, äh, dann, dann sieht er zuerst so aus, als ob das ein Bild ist, als ob ich da gar nichts erkenne. Und äh, das muss man loswerden, das Gefühl. Und ich habe das eben so gemacht, dass ich, äh, okay, ich, ich äh, hatte zu der Zeit ganz viele äh, chinesische äh, Fernsehserien geschaut auf äh, YouTube und hatte dann ein paar Kommentare dazu oder wollte wissen, was andere zu einem bestimmten Teil der Serie denken und bin dann in chinesische Foren gegangen und wollte einfach 
ich, ich war da nicht, um Chinesisch zu lernen, sondern einfach, um herauszufinden, was die Leute zu den Serien sagen, zu dieser Episode, was da passiert ist, wie die das kommentieren, äh, ob da vielleicht äh, was ist, was ich nicht so gut verstanden habe. Ähm, und in diesen Foren ist ja wirklich massig Text. Wie finde ich den Text, der für mich interessant ist? Klar, ich benutze die Suchmaschine, aber dann gibt es trotzdem noch eine ganze, äh, eine ganze Thread mit ganz vielen Antworten und so. Äh, und motiviert davon, äh, dass ich einfach nur diese Informationen haben wollte und nicht die ganzen Diskussionen durchlesen wollte, äh, habe ich halt gelernt, das quer zu lesen. Das ist natürlich die beste Motivation, aber man kann es auch selbst tun, äh, wenn man sich einfach das äh, Ziel vorgibt, so ich suche jetzt äh, äh, Ting Di oder was auch immer, äh, ein bestimmtes Wort in, in dem Text, wo ich weiß, dass, der, äh, dass das Wort vorkommt, ähm, einfach äh, quer lesen. Und wenn man es äh, zu langsam äh, liest auf Chinesisch, das ist auch ein, ein äh, häufiges Problem. Äh, die meisten Leute, äh, Europäer, Amerikaner, äh, lesen Chinesisch langsamer, als sie das laut lesen würden. Also wenn sie das ähm, einfach so äh, still lesen oder selbst wenn sie es äh, laut äh, lesen, lesen sie es äh, viel langsamer als die normale Lesegeschwindigkeit. Und das kann man sich zunutze machen. Äh, wenn man zum Beispiel äh, Hörbücher nimmt äh, oder ähm, von den Nachrichten irgendwelche Aufnahmen mit, äh, mit Text, der genauso den gleichen Text äh, enthält, die gleichen Wörter enthält, äh, und dann liest man einfach mit. Man nimmt sich das, äh, das äh, Hörbuch äh, und liest im Text mit, was die gerade sagen. Dadurch äh, verbessert man die eigene Lesegeschwindigkeit, weil die Lesegeschwindigkeit von den meisten Europäern und Amerikanern ist langsamer als das, was man dann hören würde. Das ist der Anfang. Dann gibt es natürlich noch schöne Tipps, so zum Beispiel von Tim Ferriss, der hat auf seinem äh, Blog ähm, Improve your reading uh, speed by 300% in 20 minutes, a really good article. I can recommend it also for other languages, it also works for Chinese. Uh, but this is just a basic thing, to, to use an audiobook in order to, to improve your own reading speed in a language where you read really, really slowly. <coughs> okay. So, actually, we um, out of time. Maybe I would just take uh, one question, if you have one, and we can discuss the, uh, the rest uh, over lunch, maybe. Sorry, <laughs> I'm, yeah, bad planning. Yes, over there? Yes, um, this is the part uh, where the characters come into play. Because even when you have uh, a sound like uh, sh, which exists uh, in about uh, 50, uh, there are 50 different uh, words or syllables that are all uh, sh in, in, some, in some way or other. Uh, or other. Uh, if you look at the characters, they're almost all distinct. Uh, so if you learn words based on the characters and not based on the opinion, then you don't have the problem. Listening comprehension, uh, that is uh, a bit tricky. You, ne you need to um, learn more chunks in, or in order to recognize them in that context. But yeah, it's, it's tricky and uh, something that you need to work on in Chinese in particular. Yeah, you, you can't expect to, to just hear like a, a sh and then know exactly what it means. You need the context. Yeah. Okay, so um, thank you very much for listening. I actually have a lot more material here, but um, Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much and good uh, good luck.